Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Wednesday, April the 12th, 2023. I want to start off by looking at Monday's shooting in Louisville, Kentucky. The shooter, Connor Sturgeon, according to the police, was born on 2-11-1998. Now, it being America, the month comes first, so that means he was born on February the 11th, 1998. I mean, I'm assuming the police got it right, and uh, we'll go with that. If I'm wrong, too bad. Uh, he, we don't have a time of birth. We don't have a place of birth. So I'll take his midday chart for, um, for Louisville, Kentucky, even if he wasn't necessarily born there. And so let's uh, have a look at what's going on. So uh, we'll see, there's the chart. Yeah, there's Connor Sturgeon, February 11th, 1998. I've gone for noon. Don't have an ascendant, don't have a midheaven. So what gets us about this chart? Well, first thing is the moon. Moon is in Leo and the moon is rather alone. Um, in Indian astrology, this is called uh, Kamaduma Yoga, when the moon is separate from the rest of the planets. Okay, it's it's close to the North Node, but that doesn't really count. It's a, it's away from everything else. There's no planet in, in, in its own sign, sign either side. Everything else is on the other side in his chart. So this may suggest someone who is slightly divorced from his social environment. Maybe a bit of a loner. Um, now, lots of people have Kemaduma yoga and it's not a problem. But perhaps in this case, as we know, he killed four people. Perhaps the fact that he had Kemaduma yoga had some impact on his behaviour. Also, the moon is in Leo. Um, Leo is not actually the best place for the moon to be in. Um, in Leo, the moon has no dignities. And, you know, the moon is a feminine, moist sign. And it's in Leo. Leo is a fiery sign ruled by the sun. The moon just can't really function. So it it's, can be a bit shy or it can feel overwhelmed by what's going on, um, what's going on around it. Um, and the moon, you'll notice that the moon is opposition sun. So he was born on, though he was born close to a full moon. Now, I should say there's a some chance his moon was in Virgo if he was born right at the end of the day. But I think we can say that he was probably, almost certainly does have his moon in Leo. So someone who's, a, someone who is, you know, someone who's a full moon, sun in, sun in Aquarius, perhaps quite a bit detached, um, trying to do things his way, but uh, it feels it feels rather uncomfortable, and this uh, social alienation is given further support by the position of Venus. Venus is in Capricorn, and it's square Saturn in Aries. You know, Venus Saturn squares can be about finding it difficult to get on with other people. You know, Venus is a planet of love. Saturn is a planet of restriction. And so that is kind of a bit uncomfortable. Uh, further, we see that he has Mercury, um, 45 degrees from the Aries point. Okay, that's not uh, not in itself a big deal. Actually, no, I haven't got it, uh, but uh, Mercury, yeah, Mercury, 45 degrees from the Aries point. But then we see that Mercury is 45 degrees from the Mars-Saturn midpoint. Mars and Saturn are on either side of the Aries point. So, you know, when you've got Air the Aries point on the Mars, on the Mars-Saturn midpoint, it can make you quite a destructive person. You can have a destructive impact on the world. I mean, in extreme situations, many people can die because of what you do. I mean, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. Um, 
can die. You know, when you look at, uh, you know, for example, politicians with um, Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. I'm not going to go into details there, but um, there's one person I'm thinking of in particular. Uh, okay, it's Zelensky. Zelensky, he's got Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, he could have done a deal with the Russians and saved a lot of lives um, in Istanbul last year, but he decided not to. Um, Victoria Newland has got Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Victoria Newland was the um, government official who had who was so closely involved with Ukraine's um, change of government in 2014, and you know, arguably because of what Victoria Newland did in 2014, we you know we've had this disaster in the Ukraine. So it's interesting that these two people closely involved with the Ukraine, Victoria Newland and um, Zelensky, have both got Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, so, yeah, this Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint is about the world at large. And certainly Connor Sturgeon's actions in killing these people have hit the news. Um, so the, um, that's his Aries on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Mercury is semi-square the Mars Saturn midpoint. So um, I would guess that privately he has he had a lot of thoughts about death and destruction and killing, maybe about suicide. Um, yeah, it's rather um, rather negative having Mercury Mercury there on the Mars Saturn midpoint. I mean. I should say I have Mercury on the Mars Saturn midpoint, not as closely as him. I mean, I do think about death and talk about death a lot, but I've never killed anyone. Um, I, I believe I'm pretty harmless. So if you have got Mercury on the Mars Saturn midpoint, don't think I'm singling you out. Now, as far as the shooting itself is concerned, here is the chart for the shooting. We can see that um, at the moment when he burst into the bow well, I don't know whether he burst into the bank or when it, when he started shooting Uranus was rising Uranus is the planet of um the planet of earthquakes explosions gunfire that kind of thing and it was rising at the time so I think that really um that really does um does fit so um as far as um what was go what was going on and why he did it when he did it you know i don't have a time of birth um we can you know we can look at various things we can look at the full moon i mean there's here's we sometimes in a, sometimes in astrology when you've got a big event you do look at the um for full moon or the new moon before it happened so here's the full moon just before the the previous full moon um What's interesting is that the Mars Saturn midpoint, there's the Mars Saturn midpoint, the North Node is on the Mars Saturn midpoint. So that's about interrupted work, perhaps work being interrupted because someone starts shooting. So why would it hit hit Louisville, Kentucky? What you know, what did poor Louisville, Kentucky do wrong? Well, the ascendant midheaven midpoint is around here and so it's got the south node is very close when the nodal axis is very close to the ascendant midheaven midpoint and the ascendant midheaven together is about the time and the place so the north node is on the ascendant midheaven midpoint and the north node is also on the mars saturn midpoint so i think that that full moon at least in hindsight shows that uh, this was the time and place where there was going to be a contact, that's a node, contact, with someone who does um, a lot of killing. So maybe the North Node is giving some hints, but I must emphasize this is complete hindsight. Um, we're just looking at event, an event in the past, and I don't think there's any way in the world anyone before the event could have looked at this full moon chart and said, oh, look, be careful, because there's going to be a shooting here. I think that would have been very difficult. But what astrology is doing is, you know, trying to look at the symbolism, you know, after the event, and, you know, it gives us some idea about perhaps what to look for in the future. Now, as far as today's stars are concerned, um, I suppose the big event is a moon 
Mars opposition. There's the moon in Capricorn. Uh, and it's just separating from an opposition to Mars. So when you've got Moon-Mars opposition, it's about arguments. It's a bit tense today. I mean, it's going to be difficult to see eye to eye with with other people. Um, but I think it's worth biting the bullet and trying to make progress. You know, if you find yourself having an argument with someone, particularly a big argument, don't just say, oh, this is too much, just disappear stick with it it may be but if you can stick with it you can start to stabilize the situation this is because the moon um, is also making a trine to mercury um, and you know mercury is a communication planet so if the moon is trine mercury um, that means there is scope for communication so however much you hate someone however much you disagree with someone try to try to make contact with them, try to look at things from their point of view, because I think in the end you will make progress. Now, as far as the 12 signs are concerned, you know, my readings for the 12 signs are dominated by that Moon-Mars opposition. So, Aries, two stars, your family don't understand and they may be wrong. Taurus, five stars, you make it very clear what you want. Gemini, four stars. A good day, provided you're subtle and you observe rather than act. Capricorn, three stars. It's all about, sorry, Cancer, three stars. It's all about not losing your cool. And of course, that's because the moon, ruler of Cancer, ruler of the sign Cancer, is opposition Mars. Yeah, keep your cool, Cancer. Um, indeed, all 12 signs should keep their try to keep their cool. Leo, two stars. Don't kneel. It's bad for your knees and it's bad for your ego. Virgo, three stars. You and other people have different ideas about the meaning of fun. Libra, two stars. The work-life balance may be approaching breaking point. Scorpio, three stars. Sometimes an argument is necessary. Sagittarius, two stars. Where there's money, there's controversy. Capricorn, three stars. You and someone else have got a lot of work to do. Aquarius, two stars. Bad scene, cats. Let's fade. Pisces, four stars. Make sure you say it right. OK, so that's the astrology for today. And so what we're going to do now is look at the I Ching. So as usual, I cast the coins and let's see what I got. Well, the first hexagram I got um, wasn't great. Uh, it was uh, hexagram, num hexagram number six, conflict. Now that's that's kind of um, appropriate given um, that the moon and Mars are in opposition to each other. But I don't really want to mix the two up. Um, you, you know, you have to respect the I Ching and you have to give it its own space. You can't, you know, play with astrology and whatever. It's Conflict is what the I Ching says. We're going to start off with conflict. It's going to be difficult to see eye to eye with people. We're going to have different ideas. And that's the way it is. However, there is a moving line. And it's the fifth line in the hexagram that moves, um, if you want the jargon. And that means, yes, we're going to have a conflict. But there's going to be a way to resolve this conflict. There may be even someone who is prepared to step in and act as some kind of mediator who can um, allow both parties to understand each other's points of view and come to a, can come to a good compromise. And once this compromise is, um, once you've uh, dealt with the conflict, once a conflict situation has passed, we move to hexagram number 64, which is called before completion. Now that 
leads to the point of why is there a fox on snow? Well, the hexagram of before completion has this image of a fox crossing ice. And it's really important that the fox doesn't get its tail wet. You know, it's got to gingerly walk upon the ice and its tail mustn't get in the cold water. I'm sure there's something very symbolic in, in the I Ching, in um, the Chinese way of thinking about that. So we're nearly there. We've dealt with, you know, we've dealt with the conflict, we've resolved it, and we're really near to getting what we want. So we must be very careful and we mustn't spoil it at the last moment. But we can do it. Anyway, that is all I'm going to say for today. And I will talk to you tomorrow.